this year is our year of redemption. Amen. And there's a synonym, a synonym to that word redemption. It's called restoration. And Pastor did mention to us that this year, all that which was lost will be restored. Amen. There are many things that you may not even have known that it was lost. You were not even aware that the opportunity was gone and it was taken away, snatched away. You weren't even aware. But this year, it is restored and it is restored in full. Can somebody say amen? amen. Yeah. I remember the, the prophecy by Evangelist. Evangelist, you look amazing today. <laughs> Yeah, the prophecy by evangelist last that was sometime last year in which he mentioned, you know, I was sitting down on a chair and I was just enjoying myself doing what I do for the Lord. And I didn't even know that the chair was taken away. I wasn't even aware. And I just continued doing what I was doing, you know, because as children of God, we, we, don't, we don't bother. We don't bother about what's taken, what's not taken. Well, that's none of our business. We are not even betrothed. Hallelujah. Not worried. Never worry. Don't worry about what seems to have been taken away. Tell them, but don't worry about anything that seems to have been taken away. Never worry about that. Don't bug yourself about it. You know, the people of the world, they destroy. Ah, this one was taken away. How dare you take it away? I'm fighting you because you took it away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's okay to, to do all that sometimes, but... You know, for us, we don't worry. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding garish, garishes, is it garishes, garnishes, or gar? <laughs> English is not my first language, so don't worry, I manufacture English. Okay? <laughs> you know? So, but it, it fills our hearts. It garnishes our hearts, you see? So don't worry about all that. I was just sitting down and then, ah, the chair was carried away. And, you know, despite the chair carried away, as Evangelist said then, I just kept sitting. Why? Because I wasn't sitting on, a, on that chair. I, the, the Lord was the one who was propelling me, and I was sitting in the wings of glory. And so, because I wasn't bothered, when those that carried the seat away, so I, he, I'm not even pet up. The guy's not even worried about it. He doesn't even know that a seat has been taken away. And then they used their own hands and carried the seat and came back and put it back. And I didn't even say thank you. No, I just continued doing what I was doing. Why? Because I, I wasn't even aware that anything had been taken away. Sometimes there are things that Satan has manipulated. There are things Satan has taken away that you may not even be aware of. Those things will be restored and they will be restored in full. Can somebody say amen? amen. Restored in full. You just find yourself. All you just need to do, you just keep doing what God has asked you to do. That's why Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. And every other thing shall be added. Whether it was taken before, whether it's something new, whatever it is, shall be added. So don't let yourself sit down and begin to worry about, I don't have this, I don't have that. I had this one was taken away. I had this very good job the other time. I had this very good opportunity. I had this one. I had that one. Even my girlfriend was snatched away. Nobody said you should have a girlfriend. Oh boy, I, I, this one was snatched away. The other one was snatched away and all those. No, leave all those stuff. Just let your eyes be on Jesus. And everything will be sorted. Everything will be taken care of. He knows how to restore everything. He'll restore the years that the locusts, the canker worm, the palma worm, and the worms of wherever, the invasion worms, hallelujah. He'll restore all of them back to you, glory to God. Hallelujah. And because we are redeemers, we are also restorers. That's a mindset that runs in our lineage, starting from Papa God Almighty down to the Lord Jesus Christ and every one of us. We all have the mindset of restorers. Everywhere we go, we seek to restore men back to their glory with God. We seek to restore people from that, from what Satan has turned them into. People who have become haters of one another. People who have become, uh, you know, you know so, so filled with, with distress. We seek to take out the distress from their lives and bring God's glory into their lives. Hallelujah. Anyone that comes in contact with us will light up their world. That's our function as restorers. Hallelujah. And this is what, exactly what Jesus did. I'll show you two areas in the scripture in a moment. I don't want to take you to the history 
of restoration. But you find all through the Old Testament, those people that are in our lineage, they were restorers. And you find there's a lot of scriptural evidence about many things that they restored. But then when you come to Jesus, you find Jesus also restoring, carrying out acts of restoration, acts of redemption. Of course, before the ultimate, where he went to the cross. Let's go to Luke chapter 19. We'll take you from verse 1 into verse 10. Luke chapter 19, <clears throat> from verse 1 to verse 10, tells us about a man in the Israel of the time. <laughs> I know why I said that. Glory to God. <laughs> Praise God. All right. By the way, we are going to be having a lovely time this weekend. Amen. That's on Saturday. We're going to be having a lovely time. So we encourage you to be here and then to invite others as well. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So that we can reach out to Australia with God's glory. Hallelujah. And distribute God's word to diverse people that are outside there. There are many people who may not know about God. There are people who may have an idea about God, but they don't know what God has done for them. They don't know how relevant God is to their lives. There are many people who may go to church, but they don't really participate in the God kind or God type of life. And so it's our responsibility to restore them fully back to the kingdom, hallelujah, and to give them that knowledge. And so we are reaching out to Australia because Australia is a beautiful country. I'm telling you, Australia is a really beautiful country. Glory to God. And it's filled with beautiful people. It's not just because the land is beautiful. There are many lands that are beautiful. You might have even gone to lands that are more beautiful, you know. But the place is beautiful. That not only is the land and the country beautiful, but most importantly, the people. The people are the ones that are beautiful. And so when we are celebrating Australia, we are celebrating the people of Australia. Glory to God. And also that includes you. We are celebrating you. Hallelujah. Turn to someone and say, I'm celebrating you. Yeah, that's what, I was, that's what we celebrate everywhere we go. It's about the beauty of the people. You know, this is a country where uh, several times my wallet just, you know, I, not, I'm not saying I'm careless, all right? I'm very careful. Okay, but there are times whereby I, I, I left certain things. Maybe because my mind was on, so my, my mind gets very busy. And then somebody just picks it up and says, might you just, you just left this here. But if it's in some other countries, that's the person's lunch, dinner, and next year's. Before you know it, they have taken everything. I don't, I'm not saying it doesn't happen here. But I'm saying the tendency of it happening is not as high as in other places. Now, this is a place where, you know, you may be passing by and somebody sees you in distress and the person might just stop and just be like, can I be of help? Can I assist? Can I this? Can I that? There are some other places you go to. Who cares? You like be dying there. I mean, that's, that's your business. In fact, the fact that you are dying in the open is already a problem. And they are on the move. But here, it's a very beautiful country. Glory to God. And that's why we are delighted to be here. If what happened last year happened in another country, it might be a very different situation. I wonder how it would have ended up. But thank God it happened in Australia. Hallelujah. So we are celebrating Australia and we encourage you be a part of it on Saturday, 10 a.m. We'll gather here. We'll have our T-shirts. The T-shirt, I understand, is not more than $30, right? Very small thing. Maybe two meals in McDonald's or, two, or less than two meals in... Um, I understand the burgers are better at Hungry Jack's, right? <laughs> so... So, <laughs> you buy a burger at Hungry Jack's, you buy, which one, what do they call this one again? Um, which one? <laughs> Shows you have not been going to Hungry Jack's, you are McDonald's. <laughs> double ultimate double whopper. In a large meal. Now you understand why I have a jelly belly, right? <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> So, you know, so it's a very beautiful country. And so $30 is not a big deal. You know, it's something you can easily get. Get the T-shirt, join the team. All across the nation, different people in different places will be reaching out in their different styles. And here we've got, we are strategic in our reaching out. We are very strategic. So there are ways we carry out our own reach out activities. 
And the purpose is to ensure that the gospel, that we reach more people for Jesus Christ. That's the purpose. That's our goal. So it's to ensure that more people are reached for Jesus Christ. That we distribute the messenger angel rhapsody of realities. We've got a digital format and everybody can easily access it. And these days, the day of scanning, scanning, scanning everywhere, they can just do a scan and they have a copy. And other things that we'll do. Glory to God. So we encourage you. And then on Sunday, we have, uh, we have a special Australia Day service on Sunday. Very special Australia Day service. And then we'll have a guest minister who will be here on Sunday. And he's um, the director of Youth Alive Victoria. So he'll be here to minister to us. Glory to God. It's going to be a fun service. Hallelujah. So invite as many people as you can on Saturday and invite as many people as you can on Sunday. Let's fill up this place and pack out the place so that we know we are thinking of how to get out of here. Hallelujah. If we can keep packing out this venue, we should be thinking of moving. If we can just be packing it out consistently, we should be on our way to a different place. Glory to God. Amen. All right. Luke chapter 19 from verse 1. Bible says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans. That's the tax collectors. Now understand this man, he was not a non-Jew. He was a Jew. But the Romans at the time, they used the Jews against the Jews. So they picked him for tax collection services. And so he was despised by others. Sometimes you have people who are within the fold who are despised for one thing or the other. Maybe because the person is an usher. And the way the person tells you, sit down here. So you despise the person. Or maybe because the person has become a pastor. And so the person is despised. Of course, we don't despise pastors in this ministry. Hallelujah. But there are some ministries that do. The brother became a pastor, and so he became very vibrant. Or the sister became a pastor. And from that day, she started preaching, thou shalt. Thou shalt. I mean, previously, she was with everybody. But now, she just became a pastor. And so what? Thou shalt, thou shalt, thou shalt. She, see, <laughs> she sees two young people standing next to each other. And she's like, uh-uh. Standing is a sin. Separate yourselves two meters apart. Boy, this way. Girl, this way. Standing is a sin. Don't stay there. Don't stay so close. She saw two people unmarried hugging each other. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fornicators. <laughs> and adulterers. They are parting the lake of fire. <laughs> and so they are hated. <laughs> and so they become hated. You know? Because now they become the leader now in the house of God. So many begin to hate them. You know, sometimes you find so, uh, this person has become a pastor too. Such a pastor too, maybe he's telling you about your first fruits. And they're like, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, ah. Do you mean all oh, my, wait, did you say, I'm already struggling with the tithes. The tithe part, the 10% is already a struggle. Now you are talking about every, huh, what? And so they are despised for all these things. The Bible tells us Zacchaeus was a tax collector. And he was despised. Tax collectors were despised. Hallelujah. And not just was he a tax collector, but he was there. He was, he was prominent among the tax collectors. But yet the guy was a loaded man. Hallelujah. He was rich. And so this man, he sought to see Jesus, who he was. He reached out to see Jesus, who he was. And he could not. Because there was a pressing crowd. And he was just of a little stature. Verse 4. And he ran ahead. He ran before. He went ahead of the crowd. And he climbed up into a sycamore tree. To see Jesus. Just to catch a glimpse of Jesus. For he, was, for he knew that Jesus was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place. You know sometimes even the rich have deficiencies. Those people that you are looking at and you are thinking, ah, this guy is so rich. I mean, if you saw Zacchaeus, you'd be like, ah, this guy has everything. But even Mark Zuckerberg has deficiencies. Even Andrew Forrest has deficiencies. Gina Ryan, had, they have deficiencies. All these people that a lot of people look up to, 
The prime minister of Australia has deficiencies. If he met Jesus, Jesus would tell him his personal story. And so that's why we don't look at all these people and we just look at them as, oh, we extol thee, thou art mighty. No, because in the eyes of God, there are things that they, are inadequate, that they have as inadequacies. The Bible told us in the Old Testament, somewhere in the book of Nehemiah, about a man who was a general, but yet this general, he was leprous. Even though he was a general, he had leprosy. Those he commanded, they would move left, right, center, up. They would go and stand in the middle of the battle under his instruction. But yet this guy had a serious health issue. Glory to God. And so this man, he had his deficiency. He was hated by his clan. He was hated by the people, by the Jews. And he went, but he was looking out to catch a glimpse of Jesus. And he put in some effort. He put in some, here's the point. No matter where you find yourself in life, be ready to put in some effort for God. Be ready to put in some effort to reach out for, to God. This guy had so much deficiencies, but yet he reached out. He looked for an opportunity to just, oh, if I can, if I can catch a glimpse. If I can see this one. What, I, what can I do? Where can I play my own part? Oftentimes it's so important, no matter where you find yourself in life, look out for where you can play your own part towards God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Look out for your own part. People may despise you. There may be a press. There may be a surge that may, re, that may look as though you don't have the opportunity to get to God. There may be many things that may seem as though there are obstructions on your way. But don't worry about the obstruction. You just do your own part. Hallelujah. God. Do your own part. Someone may even, maybe someone's words towards you may even become an obstruction. A family member may have some things to tell you about how, how unimpressive you are. That may be an obstruction. But don't worry about the obstruction. Just play your own little part. And Zacchaeus played his part. He went and climbed up a tree just to see Jesus. Look at what followed next. And when Jesus came to that place, the Bible says Jesus looked up and he saw the man on the tree. And he said unto him, Zacchaeus, he called him by his name. And he said, Zacchaeus, I know you are the chief priest, you are the chief, not chief priest, sorry, the chief tax collector, hated by many, disliked. And one of the reasons why they disliked those tax collectors those days, there was one out of two reasons. One of them was that Apart from the fact that they collected money and they gave it to their enemies, the Romans. Also, those who were Jews at the time felt that their money, the rightful place for the money was the temple. And that's what the Bible talked about. The rightful place for their finances was the temple. And now they were being forced. And here was a Jew in the act of forcing them to relinquish their finances to their enemies, the Romans who were dealing with them at the time. And so there was every reason for them to hate the person who was in this particular situation. This person who was carrying out this role. There was every reason to hate this person. Why? Because the person was violating two things. One, the person was helping to make them poorer. And two, the person was collecting finances and giving to their enemies and robbing God in the process. No wonder they came to Jesus and said to Jesus, uh, who shall we pay taxes to? The Romans or to God? They gave him that test. Why? Because the accurate thing was your finances should go to God and not to the government. And then Jesus was wise and he told them, he brought out the coin and he said to them, whose face do you see on the coin? And he said, it's the face of Caesar. Why? Because there were soldiers also around waiting. So if Jesus said, oh, uh, give the money to God. Then they would have said, yeah, that's it. He said it. He's on our side. Yeah. And then the soldiers would have arrested him immediately. Now you are inciting the public against Caesar. And then if he said, oh, give the money to Caesar without any good reason backing it, then they would have said, okay, so you are not on our side. You are on Zacchaeus' side. Glory to God. And so that was the trap. But Jesus now in all wisdom, because he's the embodiment of wisdom, he looked at the coin and, says, Who, and said, whose photograph do you see on the coin? And they said, this photograph, it's Caesar's photograph. 
And he said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. In other words, he left the decision to them for them to make what decision they wanted to do concerning the coin that carried Caesar's face. Hallelujah. God will give you wisdom to answer difficult questions. Wisdom. And so Jesus looked up to this man and he saw this man and he said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste, be quick, come down. For today, you that is hated by many, I'm going to your house and I'm going to stay at your place. And the man looked down, he made haste, he came down and he received Jesus joyfully. Why? Because Jesus cared for him. Those people who are rejected by society, those people who are hated by society, reach out to these people today. Glory to God. Reach out to them. Reach out to them. Joyfully, he received Jesus. And when they saw it, you would have expected people to be happy Jesus was received. No, the Bible says they murmured, saying that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. How can you go to a sinner's house? How can you go and stay in a sinner's house? We respect you so much. We have high regards for you. And then, it's not, you didn't say you are looking for Peter's house. You didn't say you are looking for Caiaphas house. You didn't say you are looking for a clean place. So you can give the synagogue. Now you are going to the house of a tax collector to go and stay in such a person's house. But look at what Jesus said. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, now because Jesus had stooped down and Jesus had received this man, this man said unto the Lord, he said, Behold, the half of my goods, what I own, half of it, I'm going to give it to the poor. Jesus never asked him to give to the poor. The man Jesus asked and said, give everything to the poor. He, he, the Bible says he went away sorrowfully. But now this man voluntarily. Why? Because someone had reached out to him. Someone had showed him some love. He was ready to give half of everything. Glory to God. When you reach out to people, when you show them love, when you reach out to restore their relationship with Christ and to ensure that God's glory reigns in their life, there is nothing that they will not be able to give. They will be ready to give. Glory to God. There was a church that was here many years back. Then they closed down before we came. The pastor of that church, he got someone passed on, a lady passed on. And she was just, they went into they went to a large church. She was a lady that just passed on and she wheeled all her assets to the church. And the money was fantastic amount of money. That's what the pastor used in buying a building within this complex and took over that building. Glory to God. He did that. Why? Because the pastor had reached out and the brethren had reached out to somebody. This lady was someone who was, well, not seen by anybody. Oftentimes, you know, you don't know what impact you make in the life of someone. You might just look at that person as though the person is so small and doesn't matter. But yet, this person is amazing. The works that this person can do for Christ is exceptional. Brothers and sisters, reach out. Glory to God. Amen. Tell your neighbor, reach out. reach out. You don't know who God can use to bless, the, bless his house. You don't know who God can use to uplift someone onto glory. Imagine if, if someone gave property in this place that was equivalent to $1.5 million. I'm telling you, some of you here, you don't need to go to school and worry again. I, I mean, you need to go to school, but your fees, you don't need to worry about fees. Why? Because it's all paid. All paid. So $30,000 that you are struggling for, the church just takes care of it for 10 people. How, that wouldn't that be so nice? And then I buy some new cars. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm serious now. I'm serious. Don't you think I need a new car? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I know. Ask, ask your neighbor. Don't, don't, don't pastor need a new car. I need a Tesla. Now, is it a crime for me to drive a Tesla? <laughs> <laughs> oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, I don't care about worldly things, all right? <laughs> but, you know, you reach out to someone. You don't know what that person may be going through. You reach out to someone. This one was hated. But yet, Jesus passing by, he reached out. And the man said, half of my property, the Bible records he was rich. And half of his property, he said, I will give it to the poor. He was ready to let it go. And then he said, if I have taken anything... 
because oftentimes the tax collectors of the time, they were known as thieves as well. So if I have taken anything that any man, from any man by false accusation, I will restore it back to the person fourfold. Total transformation of heart. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house. This day salvation has come to you. Hallelujah. And he said, for as much as he also is a son of Abraham. He also is a son of Abraham. And then he said something remarkable in verse 10. And this note it very well. Because the Bible says, as he is, so are we in this world. He said, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Whatever was lost, the Son of Man is come. Number one, to seek, to look out for them where they might be. And to bring them to salvation. And that's what we are doing during this reach out. We are looking out for those. We look out for them. We reach out for them. And our goal is to bring them to salvation. Hallelujah. That which was lost. It includes those Christians who are seen as Christians in the woods. I first heard that term here in Australia, that there are some Christians in the woods. Those who were once vibrant Christians. I mean, they loved Jesus so much. They loved Jesus so much. But then something happened. Maybe they had a nasty experience in a church somewhere. Maybe Satan managed to encircle them and gave them so much accusations about all their fellow Christians. And then they left. And now they are sitting down at home and saying, well, all those Christianity stuff. I met one guy one time. He was, he was selling suits in uh, Mitcham, Mitcham close to Nuna Wadin. And then I met this guy and I was telling him about Jesus. So I went to the place, I, was, I wanted to buy a suit and his shop was really good for suits at the time. This was pr probably like 10 years ago, there about. And I went to see this man. He had advanced in age. Very nice gentleman. And then um, when I got there, I decided this very day I was going to talk to him about Jesus. And Pastor Esther was there. And I started the conversation. I talked and he was listening so intently. He was listening so intently while I was talking. He was listening, listening, listening. After listening very intently to what I said, then I stopped and I told him, you see, that's why it's important for you to receive salvation. And that's why it's important for you to be part of a vibrant church. Then he said to me, ah, well, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You see, um, <clears throat> When I was very young, I did my own fair bit of Christianity. Huh? When I heard that, I was like. He said, when he was very young, he did his own fair bit of Christianity. And then I asked him, can you explain what, how that bit was? And then he explained how he had given his time, how he had done this, how he had done that. And he was never appreciated for it, never rewarded for it, never this for that, never recognized for it. <laughs> After everything, I invited him to church where he never came. But at least I made the effort to reach out to him. And that's why sometimes you might make the effort to reach out to people. Perhaps they may not show up. But remember something. Paul said, I sowed. Apollos watered. But God gave the increase. So you may, you may just do the sowing. Or you may just do the watering. But maybe the watering does not produce the big tree in front of you. But you have watered. You played your own part in the salvation business. Can somebody say amen? amen? You played your own part. God knows how to do the increase. Perhaps sometime the person, that same man might find himself in a hospital bed. And while he finds himself there, suddenly an angel begins to remind him, perhaps in a dream or something, about those words that you spoke to that person. And then the person finds himself accepting salvation on a hospital bed. Why? Because of something you did. But if nobody sowed, if nobody watered, where would the increase come from? That's why we've got to play our own part. Jesus played his part in reaching out to Zacchaeus and in restoring him. And he said, the son of man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That which has been thrown away. Sometimes there's somebody who you know, the person is always in the street at Coles. And the person looks so, so, so worn out. The person looks so worn out, so smelly, you know, and everything. Well, why don't you sometimes just stop and just tell the person a little bit about Jesus? 
and give the person a little tract. The person may not show up in church, but you have done your own part. Hallelujah. You've played your own part. Jesus played his own part. And the Bible says the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Hallelujah. John chapter 8. Let me show you another area where Jesus came in with salvation for that which was lost. John 8 from verse 1. You know, people are often very quick to condemn someone. And it didn't start today. It's there in Bible times. How many were condemned for different things? No wonder the Bible says Jesus came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He didn't come to condemn people. He didn't come to condemn them. There was one man who I met in Karam Downs. He later came to church. He was here in church several times. He came several times. He became a lovely friend, and he's a Christian to this day, a vibrant Christian. He now teaches in the church where he's in. And I met that guy. The first day I went to that place, I won't tell you what he does so you won't identify him. Because some of you may, may, may just be able to identify him very quick. So the first time I was passing by that place, I saw him with cigar. The guy was blowing secrets like you can't imagine. I never knew this guy even has God's word inside him. The guy was scattering his cigarette by the side. And you know, back in, in those countries where we come from, if you are smoking, all smokers go to hell. <laughs> you understand what I mean? <laughs> the guy goes to hell. So, uh, so immediately, you know, you find that stigma immediately. Ah, this, this, guy's, this guy has no care for anything in the world. The guy was tearing it up all around the place. And then uh, I walked into his shop or something I was going there to do. And then I had, after I had done what I needed to do, he didn't know I had seen him. Now, that was very important, you know, because when you observe, sometimes, you know, when you were, you were in the house of God, and we got many people, when you, are, when you observe, maybe you were, you're passing by a place and you see a brother or sister doing something that, you know, don't go and say, brother, sister, I'm seeing you. <laughs> you know, maybe you see a brother. They, this guy is a Holy Ghost, he writes, brother. He scatters in tongues, what you can't imagine. And then you see him with a sister, not a sister self, you know, somebody you never expect. And the, the person is chatting with somebody in a shopping mall and chatting beyond, you know, ordinary friends. Don't go there and say, ah, brother, I'm seeing you. I have seen, so I've caught you. So this is what you do. Remember all fornicators. Don't do that. Know what you are doing. You are just removing the person from the house of God. You are pushing the person away, far, far away. Because the, you, the person now knows that you have seen him or her. You know, so automatically, what's going to happen? The person begins to be on the run. Now, Satan surrounds the person and says, you know, hey, now that that person saw you, everybody knows. Everybody knows in the cell. Everybody knows in the church. The pastor already knows. Everybody knows. They will hate you now, from now on. By the way, is it not your life? Why don't you just live your life? You have a right to live your life. You have a right to make decisions by yourself. You have a right to this. You have a right to that. It's your life. <laughs> and that's it. The person doesn't come back to church anymore. The person doesn't come back. Now, it so happens that maybe the pastor has never called the person. And then or, uh, after you have, you know, Satan knows how to arrange things. <laughs> after you have seen, three hours later, Maybe I was just praying and speaking in other tongues, compassion in other tongues. And then the Lord says, reach out to so-so person. And Satan stands by the person. And as soon as the call comes in, I wanted to bless the person's life with a few words of blessings while I was praying for the person. But Satan stands by and he tells the person, hey, don't pick that call. It is because brother so-so-so saw you. That is the reason why this call is coming. And before you know it, the person is ostracized. So when you find people in that sort of form, what you do, pray for them. Intercede for them. Intercede for them. Don't allow Satan to use you as an accuser of the brethren. Let God use you as a restorer of the brethren. You find somebody says, I, have, I left church. I, have, I left church. I, I, don't, I don't come to church anymore. Don't sit down and just begin to listen to stories and tales. 
Tell the person, no matter what happened, you are coming back to the glory of God. You are coming back to the grace of God. There's no living church. You don't leave church because the church is Jesus Christ. So you come back to the house of God. Your goal is to restore the person. Not to join the accusers. Not to listen to tales from the devil about accusations. Hallelujah. Tell me about never listen to bad tales. I'll listen to the word of God. That's Jesus. That's how Jesus functioned. That's how Jesus functioned. The Bible tell, tells us in that Luke chapter 19 that we read that people who were around Jesus, they were not happy that Jesus was going to have a party with, with, uh, with Zacchaeus. They weren't happy about it. But Jesus was not ready to listen to those tales. Now here's another situation. The Bible says Jesus went into the Mount of Olives. And early in the morning, he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him. And he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman. The other one was a man. This one is a woman now. Brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. That means she had been captured in the midst of adultery. And when they set her in the midst. So already the circumstantial evidence shows guilty. Caught in the middle of the act. And then they set her in the midst. Now, when the Bible says they set her in the midst, that means they put her in the middle, which means all her accusers gathered around her. There was a mob that was on this woman while she was there. I've been in situations, <laughs> glory to God. <laughs> I've been in that I've seen situations where you have a mob around somebody. It can be really terrifying. When everybody's, this one is saying their own. You know, pastor said, come, come, come. Master, you know you're looking beautiful. Thank you. Because it's a woman, that's why I'm using you for this lovely example. There, she's there. No, just stand, just stand. This one is standing here. Hold on, hold on. You are dead today. And everybody at the same time. Everybody's on her. They set her in the midst. And they were all busy accusing her. Which one will she respond to? This one is talking about last week. The other one is talking about last year. The other one is talking about the neighborhood. The other one is talking about children. The other one is talking about the government. The other one says, you are already dead today. The other one has already held the stone. You see this stone? This one, that was everybody. Who do you listen to? And it so happened that they brought her, while they encircled her, Jesus was right there standing by her. Or sitting by her. Glory to God. Thank you so much. Satan accusing somebody. Satan using others to accuse somebody. Sometimes you find those people who have entered into acute depression. I tell you one of the key causes of acute depression is the accuser of the brethren. The handiwork of Satan. So here he surrounds them with demons. This demon is saying, you know what? All your finances is gone. The other demon is standing. All your relationships destroyed. The other person, all your family destroyed. The other one, all, your, all your future destroyed. Your academics destroyed. You are a wreck. You are a this, you are a that. And here's this person sitting down there and hearing all types of voices. Sometimes you see those who are depressed, they, they, Shut their eyes. And, mm, why? Because they are hearing all sorts of things. That's the situation they put this woman in. But look at how Jesus dealt with it. He came to seek and to save that which is lost. Hallelujah. Say with me, I'm a restorer. I'm a restorer. You find somebody who's depressed around you, come with good news to that person. There's a beautiful life ahead of you. You tell that lady, there's a beautiful life ahead of you. Brother, there's a great life ahead of you. There's a glorious life ahead of you. You are going to succeed. You'll be better than you can ever imagine. All those thoughts and your past, they are gone away. There's a glorious life ahead of you. There's a glorious future ahead of you. It's time for you to walk onto glory. Take away the negative pictures that Satan has given to the person. Hallelujah. So they set this woman there, 
Then they said unto Jesus, Master, this woman was captured in adultery, in the very act of adultery. Now Moses in the law commands us that, thou should be, that that woman should be stoned. But we want to hear from you. What do you say? The law says this. What do you say? The law says she's a dead woman already. What do you have to say? Are you going to confirm the law of Moses? The Bible says all fornicators, adulterers, all liars, all this, all that shall have their part in the lake of fire. Are you going to condemn this person now? Look at what the Bible says. They said this tempting Jesus that they might have something to accuse him of. Why? Because they knew Jesus was always looking out for ways to free those who were in this kind of situation. And the Bible says Jesus stooped down and he began to write, hallelujah. And he wrote on the finger, in the, on the ground with his finger, as though he was not even hearing them. Pastor told us something interesting. Anytime you find accusations being leveled around you, whether by spirits or by men, ignore them. That's what Jesus did. Learn how to ignore accusations. Somebody's accusing your fellow music minister. Somebody's accusing someone in the house of God. Someone is accusing the pastors. Someone is accusing this, accusing that, accusing that. Just understand, it is the accuser of the brethren that is at work. And his name is called the devil. That's his name. It's not the person that's talking. There's a spirit in that person that is doing the accusation. And what do you do to that spirit? Start by ignoring that spirit. After ignoring that spirit, begin to cast out that spirit from around you. Hallelujah. Bible says Jesus bent down. So then they continued asking him. When they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and he said unto them, If you are without sin... Be the one to cast the stone. He who is without sin, cast the stone. And the Bible says, and again he stooped down and he continued writing on the ground. And when they heard it, they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in his midst. Glory to God. Then when Jesus had lifted up himself and he saw no one but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those that accuse us? Those who accused you, where are they? Says, had no man condemned you? And she said, Lord, nobody has condemned me. I can imagine how she felt at that time. When they were accusing her, she felt I'm dead today. It's all over. Because in the, um, in the minds of those who were accusing her, she was already a dead woman. But now they were all gone and she was just there with the Lord. And the Lord said, where are your accusers? And she said, there are no more. And then Jesus said unto her, neither do I condemn thee. So what are you going to do? Go and sin no more. In other words, go and live a glorious life henceforth. Hallelujah. See, this is the mindset of God. Restoring people who have been declared guilty. Restoring those who have been thrown away. Restoring those who have been set aside. Restoring those who have been looked down upon. These are the very people we are called upon to restore back to their glory. Hallelujah. And to bring them to the house of God. This is the reason why we reach out. Can somebody say amen? amen. This is the reason for our involvement. And that's why on Saturday... Ensure you are around to be a part of it. As you're going out, God, the Spirit of God will lead you to certain people that you will reach out to and transform their lives. Perhaps it is just to sow a little seed into them about the beauty that God has brought to their lives. Perhaps it's just to sow a little word of comfort to somebody. Perhaps it's to say a little prayer for somebody. You know, one of the things I noticed about Australians, they are very receptive to prayer. Even if they don't believe, you tell, can I pray for, I just want to say a word of prayer to bless your life. Oftentimes, they are receptive to prayer. It may just be to say a word of prayer. That word of prayer will make a, meaning, a lot of meaning to that person. Can somebody say amen? amen? You play your part and you allow God to do the rest. Hallelujah. Why? Because you are a restorer. Glory to God. Rise up on your feet. Let's declare and let's speak in other tongues. 
Kora baliga bahaya. Kora balabaye. Say, Lord, I'm carrying out your work of restoration. As you speak in other tongues, make this declaration. I'm carrying out your work of restoration. As you are, so I am. You came to seek and to save that which is lost. I'm also reaching out to those who are lost. Those who have become Christians in the woods. Those who have become unrecognized Christians, uncelebrated Christians. I'm reaching out to them. Lero Shaka Bahaya. I'm telling people about the salvation work of Jesus Christ. Malabo Sahaya. Libaro Sahaya. I'm a tool for evangelism. Labo Sata Bahaya. I'm a tool for reaching out to my world. Kabo Sata Bahaya. Malaba Sheke Bosa. Karo Saha. Libaro Sete Liga Bahaya. Maraba Shanda Rabaha. Raba Sota Liga Bahaya. I'm planting the seed of God's word into the hearts of men. I'm watering the seeds of God's word in the hearts of men. Kabo Sapaya, Libo Satarabaha, Kero Sheke Bosaha, Liga Baye, Rabba Shanda Labaha, Rabba Sote Liga Bosaha, Rabba Ebo Sheke Bosa, Liba Rosete Liga Bahaya, Maraba Sotaha, Kabo Shaka Baha, Ligebo Sotoraha. Through me, many are receiving salvation. Many are receiving the beautiful words of Christ. Kabo Shakaya. Light is being brought into a dark world. I'm a conduit pipe for God's love. Kabo Shatabaha. Libara Batekebo Sete Ligabahaya. Through me, depression will be removed from the lives of many. Kabaye. Libo Sobara Bashaha. Hope is brought in. Love is brought in. Joy is brought in. Kabaye. Lero soto liga bahaya, maro sata bahaya, makabara balege bosahaya. I bring hope to Australia. I bring hope to my world. Kabo shakaya. I bring hope to Victoria. Lero sata la bahaya, makabale bosoto liga bahaya. I have the handkerchief to wipe the tears from somebody's eyes. Kabara boseke boshahaya, matabara baha. I'll turn that frown into a smile. Kabaliga bahaya, makabaro sete liga baha, makaba shanda rabali bahaya, makaro soto lige bosaha. God's glory will be revealed in greater measure in the lives of Australians. Makora bahaya, matala bahere bosahaya. I'll show them there's a life to be lived in glory. There's a life of grace to be lived. Kabo seke bosahaya, mante kora bashanda ha, makabo shanda haya. I bring healing to many. Kale bosahaya, I pray and I'll declare healing upon their bodies. Kabo rabaha, healing upon their minds, healing upon their finances, healing upon their marriages, healing upon their distresses. Kabo Rabba Liga Baha. I'm a country pipe of God's glory. Rabo Shaka Baha. Libo Sobara Baha. They are restored back as kings on this earth. They are restored back as princes, as priests on this earth. Kabo Rabahaya. Libo Robo Sotori Gabaha. Nobody will live a down life around me. Leko Zobahaya. I recruit them into the love world. The world of God's love. Kabo Shaka Bahaya. This and much more I will do in the name of the Lord Jesus. And everybody said Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Glory to God. Yes, we will seek and we will save that which is lost. It's our job. We are restorers. We restore peace in families. We restore health in people's bodies. We restore broken futures. We restore lives of glory. And if you're here today, you haven't yet given your heart to Jesus Christ. You haven't yet declared Jesus as Lord of your life or you are connected online or you're in any of our fellowships or our churches and you'd like to give your heart to Jesus Christ this is very important Jesus said you must be born again a glorious birth a spiritual birth a brand new you 
you'd like to do that today, here's what you're going to do. Shut your eyes and shut everybody out. It's you and the Lord right now. Put your hand on your chest where you are and repeat these words after me. Say, oh Lord God, I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe Jesus died on the cross to save my soul. I believe Jesus rose up from the dead and he's alive today. I declare that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life from this day. And I receive by faith eternal life into my heart. I have eternal life now. I am born again. I am a child of God. I am a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for transforming me. And from this day, I live a life of glory, glorifying your holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you've said that prayer today, congratulations, you are born again. Glory to God. Can somebody shout glory? You are born again. That's all it takes to be born again. That's the Bible way of receiving salvation. Declaring the Lordship of Jesus on your life. And if you're here in this hall, you just said that prayer. and sure you reach Pastor Esther after the service. But if you are online, use the details on the screen to reach out to us. would like to hear your salvation story and would love to ensure you are planted in a Bible-believing church. And we have a lovely book that we want to make available to you. It's called Now That You Are Born Again. It's a special book that will start you out strong in this new life that you have in Christ. So ensure you reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. God bless you. Now we'll take our tithes and our offerings. Let's worship.